Okay, this is a tutorial on how to use Firehouse Medic. So I'm just going to go through the steps of this and break this video up into a few different sections to help you. Uh, on Firehouse Medic, you have to choose a unit. In this case, we're going to choose this Medic Unit 181. Um, your username, you can type it in or choose from a drop down list again. So my username is Darren Decker. I'm going to click Submit. Hopefully you can see my keystrokes on there. And then your password. Okay, so now at this point I can add additional personnel uh, on the run. Or I don't have to. Those can be added later. And I'll show you that. I do have to submit a shift. Um, so we'll just use one and hit submit. Now I'm going to click add practice. You're welcome to do this so it doesn't interfere. So I'm going to add a practice run and it says are you sure you want to submit a practice ticket and I hit yes. Okay, so the first box that comes up and these are all tabs here and they have sub tabs you'll see below them as it loads. with different information. We'll go back to response, that's our first tab. Let me see here, back this up a little bit so you can see all of the tabs. There we go, now you can see the tabs. Incident information, so we'll put in an address as 4567 Firehouse Lane. Click enter or submit, zip code we can type it in or we can click and you can see the zip code that once entered it automatically populates your city and state location type home street highway public building will make this a public building this is our year 14 so uh, it defaults hopefully if it does not go back and correct that 001 click submit date of incident we can type this in by using our keyboard or the number pad or we can click now and it populates that Click enter. All runs are ALS. This is an ALS vehicle we're working off of. Census track, uh, these are not assigned, so you just you can click one or leave it blank. It should not create an error message. Dispatch complaint. We'll do breathing problems. Now in the dispatch complaint, this is kind of important because you'll see later that we have some quick action buttons and um, depending on which dispatch complaint we pick uh, gives us different action buttons. So this is a breathing problem. So this is all complete. We can go to our call times. On our call times, we can put the uh, time in different ways. For instance, if this uh, cuff book is up and running and we get into the truck, if we click in route, it self-populates the exact current time. Or we can go back and hit now, five minutes ago, ten minutes ago. So let's say ten minutes ago the call was received and um, we were dispatched a minute after that. So I can click ten minutes ago plus one. Sorry, ten minutes ago plus one and it populates that. So call received at 1024. As you can see, Dispatch at 1025, and we were in route at, let's make it 10 minutes ago, 10, 1026. So we get at the scene now. I'm clicking this button over here, and it populates the time. At the patient, we can click, and I'm going to add a minute. Departing the scene, I'm just going to go through these and populate these. Otherwise, they'll remain red. Let's say it took us five minutes for our transport to the hospital, transfer of care. Now, and we'll do six minutes. In unit clear at, uh, let's say, we're going to clear that box 11 o'clock even. And back on station at 11.20. Okay, so that should clear up and... and um, validate those two. We don't need NIFRS or incident narrative. Everything else is going to be patient 
um, driven. So we click on our patient, demographics, personal info. Our patient is Mr. Decker. His name is David. His date of birth, in this case, would be 05 21 1971. You can see when you put that in, it automatically populates his age as 42 and years old. So we'll come down and click on race. He's a white male. You can see the options, by the way, if I go back here, black, Hispanic, Asian. Um, this is all for st statistical purposes. Phone number, unable to obtain. It's not important. Social security number, the same thing. We do not need this information and, unless we would start billing. The patient's address. Now, we, this is a free form field. We can type in anything we want. If I X out of this, I can click copy from the incident address if he lives at 4567 Firehouse Lane. Now, you have to scroll down to get into your next field, County, Franklin, and we click whether he's a resident or not. And again, this is for billing purposes. Past medical history. These are pre-populated boxes, but if we go to metabolic, we can click that Mr. Decker has diabetes. Meds. This is a free, free form field box here at the top, but as we type something, uh, Novolog. You can see that a box comes down here with Novolog, and I can click that. I can leave the amount and the frequency blank and just hit continue. You can see it populates this box. Uh, if we don't have a medication in there, uh, my med, then we just type in my med and add this. Same thing. We do not need to put in an amount and click populate that box. So some drugs are already in there for your help to speed things along. Allergies to medications. It's an NKDA. This gentleman doesn't have any allergies. And we do not need insurance information at this time. So uh, again, we're not billing. If uh, they do have insurance information, you can fill that out. Or we can just let our uh, insurance provider, uh, biller, collect that information. Situation. Uh, we were dispatched to a difficulty breathing, so I'm going to look for something that is breathing problems, respiratory distress. Oops, I don't know what I clicked on there, but respiratory distress. Okay, and it comes up respiratory distress, and the chief complaint, if he's got difficulty breathing, we can just click this button, and it populates as respiratory distress, or, or that's an open field. We have a secondary impression. If we think that there's something else contributing to his respiratory distress, um, maybe hypothermia. Maybe he was in a hot environment. Okay, so that's his chief complaint, OPQ or s and T. We can go in and um, find out what provocates it. If it's chest pain, if it's a chest pain run, quality, radiation, severity, and again, all these are pre-populated, or you can type in free narrative into that box. Assessment. The assessment has a lot of tabs on here. So the easiest way to do assessment is click Add a New Assessment. We're, let's say we're uh, in the back of the truck, so five minutes ago is when we first approached this patient and started to do assessment. I'm going to click within normal limits. This populates all of these tabs, and you can see there are many fields here. And otherwise, you have to go in and click that the assessment uh, on each of these things that were checked was normal. Now, everything is within normal limits, but I know I did listen to lung sounds and I heard a little bit of wheezing expiratory for his difficulty breathing. So I'm going to click, so normal disappears. I click that twice, and it shows wheezing expiratory. If we find any other problems, all we have to do is click on this box. The box that uh, corresponds to it, right lower extremity, and maybe he's having a pain associating that right lower extremity or weakness within we can click that and it will add it. So we have in our assessment everything is within normal limits with the exception of some expiratory wheezing. For car accident victims, um, symptoms, respiratory skipped symptoms, we can put uh, he has a productive cough. Now for injury, a lot of times for uh, uh, traumas, we can go in here and put um, the mechanism what he was doing, the incident location, incident type, et cetera. And then we can do a diagram of this patient to specify exactly what his injuries are. And if this is a vehicle accident,
I click that area and then click pain and it shows up and then we can show the back of the patient so anytime you have injuries or whatever uh, we can click on this and this printout will show up with your printed patient report I'm going to stop this and we'll continue the rest of, of the uh, training in a separate video